please? I am. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So just so you know, everything now is being recorded in the meeting, not just a public hearing. Um, and and the, the entire meeting is recorded. So that's all I'll say. It's recorded and, and this is while we're doing the, uh, we were able to do the Zoom meetings under uh, one of the governor's executive orders. And one of the requirements is, is the full recording be on the, the town's website. So if you want to listen to any, one of the Board of Selectmen minute, meetings you, or any of the meetings, you can click on the website and you'll get uh, the full recording. And so ours is up there as well. There we go. Thank you. Uh, so all we have on, on the, um, I'll call the meeting to order. Let's see. I always need help, help with, is nobody's an, an alternate. Alex, are you a regular member? Yes. yes. Okay. Sorry. I just don't keep track of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so Tom is not with us and Larry is not here. Okay. And no so, EJ. And no, well, EJ is off the commission. Yeah. 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 So just to let everybody know that Paula just let me know. I, I just found this out a few moments ago. EJ resigned at the last board of selectmen meeting and uh, at a, an upcoming meeting, I'd like to do something just to recognize how much time he's put in over the years and wonderful contributions and I'll miss him. We can put another plaque together like we did uh, for the last guys. That would be wonderful. It really would. I don't think we'll get him to zoom in on us, though. No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Paula, any changes to the agenda? None. Okay. And uh, the minutes of July 13th, 2020, I read them. Everything looked accurate. Any corrections from anybody? No. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes as mm -hmm. presented. I'll second it. Who's Thanks. seconding? Rich. You were not at the meeting? I was at the last meeting, wasn't I? It, it says was. you were not. It no. says you were not. No. I'll second it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was okay. July 13th. I was here in July. I signed in late. Let me just. I was like five or 10 minutes late. I remember that. <laughs> Meeting for the that was that sheet. was the meeting before. Yeah, I thought that, that was the meeting before. Also, I think you have to be present for the whole meeting to be able to vote on it. Okay. Okay. If uh, let's see. Uh, let me modify my motion. I make a motion. We accept the minutes of July thirteenth, twenty twenty, subject to verification of Rich's attendance at that meeting. If it's corrected, let's let the record be updated. Rich, just or just let Flo know exactly. All right. We, need to oh, like we can we can listen on the website. Yeah. yeah. Not okay. a problem. Yeah. Somebody okay. else second it. It's not that big a deal. Okay. Yeah, Alex did. Yep. Okay. Any any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Bob, you're saying aye. Aye. Okay. Sarah. Here. I'm abstaining. I'm abstaining because of my absence. Yeah. Okay. And Tom Courier is arriving. Do we have a quorum to vote, Rich? Yes, we did. Only three people voting makes it a quorum. We had four people. Vera's here. Yeah. Uh, Vera was absent at that meeting. Yes, I'm but you abstaining. So you abstain. You have three people. Yes, the majority of you just need a majority of in favor, which you have, right. and it's a total of five mm -hmm. votes. Okay, so the motion carries to uh, mod uh, approve the minutes, subject to verification of um, Rich, Rich's um, attendance status. I think that was the previous meeting, Rich, but we'll check. You can, okay. yeah, we can do that offline. Uh, yes. are there, do we have any members of the public, audiences of citizens, anyone who would like to speak up? And Larry has arrived. Um, Lisa Napolitano is present. I don't know if she wants to speak. Lisa, did you have anything you'd like to say to us? Somebody better turn her on. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You heard her? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
she's still muted on mine. <laughs> her yeah, voice was really she is her. I think she she's the one that has to unmute. She does. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I did ask her to unmute. Hmm. Probably coming through on yours, Rick. Excuse me? She's probably coming through on your mic. Yeah. Uh, she, she is. Yeah, she's upstairs, so yeah, her voice travels. I've been the victim of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. You're in trouble on that one. Mm-hmm. We, we all talk. get in trouble. <laughs> well she's all set. She's just listening. Okay. 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 So we're going to continue our public hearing on the proposed zoning regulation revisions to sections 8, 5, 61, and 65. Uh, hopefully we can finish up the public hearing this evening, but we'll see where we go with this. Okay. Um, I, I just want to point out that Larry is here if you want to uh, seat him for the vacant position. Yes, I seat him for... The vacant position. The vacant position. Okay. <laughs> formally known as. Well, I'm, I'm, formally, I'm formally, vacant tonight. I'm for, present formally known. Vacant. Formally known as the EJ position. Uh, should we make uh, just as an aside? Should we make a request to the board of selectmen to reach out to the Republican Town Committee to come up with a replacement for EJ? Uh, we're already working on that, by the way. Okay. Larry? Yes. You want to be the permanent replacement? If so, there's a pathway pathway to it. <laughs> yeah, come visit. <laughs> okay. So that being said, Paula, do you want to give a summary? It's been two months since we've had a meeting. I had to read through all of the proposed changes to become familiar with them. I, a lot had passed out of my mind, but uh, the biggest one here is the home occupation and Paul has created a, some support materials. And I had a, a, a conversation with her this afternoon prior to the meeting. Uh, anything anybody wants to bring up or should you want to just kind of do a, a slight rehash of this as to where we were last time around? I'd like to talk a little bit about what we're doing. I mean, why are we, are we having issues with uh, small businesses and homes right now? Do we have any history of people open up businesses? Because realistically, this is, excuse me, somebody could say something? I thought I heard somebody say, wait. Um, <coughs> as far as cottage industries goes, um, that's a very wide description of, of how businesses start. Many businesses start in the home. My sign shop started in the home. I actually had a small CNC machine and I didn't go have to ask for half the permissions that are here to start it. Now, I, I, everything was kept within my house and I did have some deliveries and occasionally I'd have more than one person or two persons stop in to go over their projects. It just seems to be very, very tightly restrained. I mean, realistically, a cottage industry and a home business is everything from Hearthstone Winery to uh, Walt's power equipment to the guy down the road from me who, uh, sharpens blades, chainsaw blades, saw blades. And there's times where they get two or three people coming in and out of their driveway. And they're only working out of their garage. We got a seamstress who gets people to come in. And it just, it, it just seems very restrictive. And by putting such tight numbers on these things, to me, it is bothersome. It's very um, restrictive to getting started. A lot of people can't afford starting a new business to not be able to put uh, any equipment in their property if they have a barn or something to get started. I mean, come on, Microsoft started in a garage. So didn't uh, Apple, he started yeah. in his house. You know, all these businesses have, many of them have roots starting on their properties with little or no money. And just looking at these three categories here, it seems restrictive. I mean, you take a tree guy, he can easily outweigh the restrictions on his vehicle being in his yard, you know, with a trailer, a chipper, you know, and the equipment that goes along with it. But yet they're all over. We're a rural area. I mean, economically, you look up the economics in rural areas with small businesses started out of their homes. It's incredible how many of them start in their homes and on their properties. You know, 
is there a line when it becomes a nuisance to their neighbors? There, yeah, there can be, but on average, I don't think it's that much. You know, um, you can only do so much on your property before your business actually goes in reverse. After a certain size, you have to move up and out, and that's just a good starting point. What, 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 what is your thoughts about our regulations? Are you proposing something different than what is put forth here? Well, I think Rich, we currently have regulations on home occupations. We've had them since 1983. Um, these are very similar to those. The question that I posed, I mean, you know, I, I, I just, if, if you're making a statement there, one of, the, one of the things was quite inaccurate. Hearthstone yeah. Winery, not a home business. Not, well, not, it's, it's, in a, it's in a residential neighborhood. And it's a kind of, we're not talking about that at all. We're well, talking you're picking one. But, you know, typically farmers and stuff operate off their business. And many of them start selling other things to help out their farm business. Let's talk factually accurate, though. Hearthstone Winery is not a home business. So my, the point is, I'm just asking you, what is it you're proposing? You want us to scrap all home regulation of home businesses or? No, well, I didn't have to go through this. So I opened my sign shop in here. I went down to the town. Told I, them I know, I but doing. you said that already. But what is it you're asking us to do? Are you asking us to do something specific? Um, specific? I think you, I mean, all right, a moderate business. So you have to come up with a site plan review, which oh. you Huh? Oh. oh, are you just looking at the spreadsheet I sent out today? Yep, level of approval. Are you, are you looking at, at the actual regulations? This was- No, uh, I'm talking uh, about what's being proposed. No, I'm, well, I'm saying, have you, are you looking at the proposed regulations, which are just a modification and clarification of the existing regulations? During the last meeting, and I don't think you were there, the last time we talked about this, um, uh, Bob and, and Rick, I think it was, um, the two of them were suggesting that we put something together in a spreadsheet so that we can, can have a clearer discussion. Um, this spreadsheet so this, was sent to me today. Yes. They asked me to develop a, one. I did, and I sent it today. I sent it two months later, but I sent it today. Um, okay, so excuse me. Let me just a point of order here. Rich, I asked a question. I said, what is it, you're, what is it that you are proposing. And okay, if there's so, nothing specific right now, let's just get into the review of this and maybe you'll, some thoughts will gel after right, we've- Let's, let's get into the review of it then. Okay. You know, um, as far as where we are with this, um, let, let's talk through where we, a review of the regulations to the point where of our last discussion. So we have an understanding where we were. Um, we did want to relax the ability to get a permit through staff approval uh, or staff staff um, administration uh, uh, for many types of home businesses. The purpose for regulating home businesses is an understanding that certain kinds of home business uses have a negative impact on adjacent property owners and the neighborhood in general um, if they're not regulated. So you 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 used a perfect example of the kind of thing <coughs> I wouldn't want to have in my neighbor's yard. I wouldn't want a large piece of industrial equipment and a chipper and all that stuff rolling in and out of my neighbor's yard as an individual. That's why we locate in a residential zone. But that said, let's get into reviewing the regulations. And if you have something specific that you would propose that we do, I would hope that we could approach it from that perspective so that we can make some decisions about what, what it is that we're going to do here, just to keep the process moving forward, the process of reviewing the proposed regulations and making changes to them. Okay, I said, let's go. Let's, don't have to go around on that, just we'll do it. So our current regulations that are in the books and have been for about 30 years, um, the only home occupation that staff can approve, and that's the ZEO, it's not me, it's the ZEO can approve, is for a business that has zero people coming in. Absolutely nobody. Anything else is a special permit through the Planning and Zoning Commission. This is why we need to, to change our regulations. Um, so what we were talking about doing is, is perhaps having three levels 
um, so that staff can approve uh, something that is not going to be, uh, or it's most likely isn't going to affect the neighbors. Um, and maybe, um, so the staff could approve that. Um, something that the commission may want to put a little bit of a condition on because the, um, the business could have an impact. Uh, perhaps that's with site plan review. Some of that may be once you get more, um, more noise, more activity uh, in a residential neighborhood, you may want to have a little bit bigger setbacks just so that uh, there's a little separation, a distance. And then a business that um, could impact the neighbors would, would be a, a public hearing just so the neighbors can weigh in on it. Um, so that's, those are the, the, the thoughts of having three. And again, currently we have a little bit, can a, if, no, if there's no visitors, the staff can approve it and every other home, home, uh, home occupation needs to have a public hearing. Um, then we, Rick asked me today if I could look up to see how many home occupations we've had that have been, that have come through. Um, and over the last five years, I don't know what they were for, because I just, he asked me to just look at it quickly. We had about um, a little over 37 in five years, so about eight a year. Um, and most of those are just people that are uh, selling online or um, they're not, um, are doing work at home. They're not having any any uh, um, customers, or visitors come in. So, and then there were we had um, in the last five years we've had two that have been special permits for the that have come to the planning and zoning commission. Do you remember offhand, Paula, what those were? The dog grooming on Gollin Road. Okay. And then the last one we just did it a few weeks ago, a couple months ago. The Force therapy at 113 Pine Street. You asked me to look at this as in the easiest manner possible, which then also means we may have missed something on here, but. That's um, fine. I asked Paula to just gather a little bit more intel for us so we could have a feel for what's gone on in the past in, in a very general way. Uh, Cause I couldn't have told you 38 applications over the last. Well, they didn't know, come, yeah. I, so without without that information, so again, where we evolved in this discussion was to a um, dividing potential home businesses into three possible categories. Is that overly dissecting it? I don't know. That's for us to discuss and come uh, to a perspective on. But clearly, we want to have the, the the broadest range of of. And I'm speaking for myself now when I say we. I would prefer the broadest range of home occupations that have no impact on the neighbors. I want just staff approval of that. I don't want us to have to have a discussion over it. It's really when it starts to impact neighbors and the, the character of the neighborhood, that's when we would probably want some sort of control, whether it's a, simply an approval by the, the commission or needing a public hearing. Rick, so what, about something, what about something like a bed and breakfast? It's a different uh, category. Okay. So we have that, and I think that is special permit, but it's a, another, it's a category of use in the residential district. I don't think we call that a home business per se. You know, we've, we've traditionally treated, looked at home businesses as where people operated an office out of their house. Um, I'm sure there's a lot that are being operated out of their homes. Heck, I do most of my work out of my home. Do I need to right. register home business? I, I don't think that we, we've aimed that. Nobody comes here. I, I don't, op, you know, don't actually operate my business out of here. I have an office. I just, in the pandemic, I've been operating out of the house. But how do we make it easy for people to just live their life and do their business? And when do we need to regulate? And so, Rich, you bring up good, some very good thoughts. But if somebody starts to operate a business with lots of package deliveries every day, um, coming in to feed a business, an inventory-based business, or you know, some sort of service business, do we want to regulate that? You know, now those trucks are coming to everybody's house. I mean, do we even need to regulate it based on that? I don't, I don't have an answer. I'm, I'm just throwing these out as questions. For me, for me one of the uh, deciding factors as to whether the staff is going to approve it or it goes to a, a, a public hearing is whether there's um, visitor parking. 
I think that's the biggest thing that can impact an adjacent piece of property is you know, two or three extra cars that are parked on a, on a particular lot and where that's located. How close is it to the property line? How close is it to the neighbor? What happens inside the house, I really don't care. But uh, as far as outside the house, outside the home, what kind of vehicles are gonna be parked there? Are there gonna be box trucks? Are there gonna be cranes? Are there gonna be wood chippers? Are there gonna be just cars? And where are they gonna be parked? That's the important thing in my mind. Where, Bob, just uh, what about the um, uh, quantity of deliveries or, or delivery trucks coming and going? Well, I mean, Amazon shows up once a day and UPS shows up once a day and sometimes the post office shows up once a day. You know, you can't control when they're going to deliver sometimes. So uh, then you got FedEx and a couple tough others. To tough to regulate those. So maybe that's something I mean, we don't want are you going to tell the post office, no, they can't deliver because somebody else has already been there today? You're not going to be able to do that. So logistically, I think that's difficult. Now, if you have DHL delivering four times a day, that's something else. But because there's mul there are multiple delivery systems, it's going to be, I think it's going to be hard to regulate those. Can I say something about that? Of course. If you're getting that many deliveries in a day, chances are you have a, quite a big production going on and you're not going to fit in there if they're making that many deliveries because DHL or, and FedEx is only going to come once a day. Unless you get freight, then it's going to be a tractor trailer truck. So, right. and then that, if you're getting lots of traffic in that manner, you're operating something where you're going to need, you know, probably 10,000 or more square feet for production, for packaging, repackaging. That's a whole nother animal. That's no longer cottage industry style stuff, you know, most stuff that comes out of the house, because I did a little research on cottage industries, and most of it's, you know, real, real small custom manufacturing, things that are done that somebody starting up that business isn't going to make it by renting a commercial spot. They don't have that kind of production. So, you know, when it's confined to the house or to small barn on your property, chances of you getting that type of, st that type of traffic are slim to none. You know, don't forget, there's people that do uh, all different kinds of massage therapies and stuff, and we don't want to go down that street. It's not adult bookstores, but, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that comes in and out of houses with people, you know. There's wellness stuff, you know, small clientels. You know, that we got a seamstress somewhere around here that has clients come in, get stuff fitted, and they, and they do uh, sewing and stuff. So they get people coming in and out. And I'm sure that, you know, some businesses have busier time of year than others. It's, uh, Go ahead. Are you going to say something, Bob? I think, it's tough. I think it's tough to figure out who's going to deliver. I mean, I've ordered stuff from Amazon and the U.S. Postal Service delivers it. Yeah. You know, so, FedEx does you know, the sometimes. Yeah. goes up one time. I've had three deliveries in one day from three different carriers just for personal stuff. So, uh, Bob, you hit something that I think is, uh, Bob, you hit on something that I think is maybe a, a, a better way to approach whatever we're trying to do, the number of parking spaces for outside visitors. You know, I don't think we can uh, even start to address any business based on numbers of deliveries. Uh, you know, if it's home-based, we don't, they don't have any control over the number of deliveries, not really. Uh, right. But having a, a control over the number of parking spaces for the public. And so maybe let me just throw out a number arbitrarily without any analysis. Maybe uh, with a minimum of uh, two parking spaces, um, it is a staff approval. If they need, um, you know, three or more parking spaces, it becomes a, a commission approval. And then special permit is for where there's any type of heavy equipment or any other type of um, expansive use of the property where we're worried about the amount of traffic, the, the, scope of the, the scope of the travel. And so there's only, you know, you, and I don't want to enact regulations that we can't enforce and that there's no chance that we can administer. I mean, we don't have, you know, delivery pol police um, at town hall overseeing this and we don't, we're not going to. So regulating what we can have control over, like number of parking spaces, 
may be the most efficient approach. That was a very good suggestion. And I think also, Rick, the uh, type of vehicle. I think, and, I think the graphic that uh, Paula sent out is really helpful. Um, I certainly don't mind if my neighbor has a home at the business, but I don't want him parking a large box truck 10 feet from my house. You know, so I think you know, regulating the, the, the type of vehicles that can be parked is also important. And that's something that's relatively easy to verify and enforce if it's not being adhered to. You know, counting numbers of trips per day, the number of people coming per day, we can't, I don't think we can do that on a practical level. Well, the parking will be based on what uh, the person is going to say they anticipate for um, either visitors or employees. That would be what would drive how many parking places, I would presume. Um, and we would need to know more about how many employees or how many visitors and not just a business saying, I need three parking places. Uh, well, there are some towns, there are some towns that do, there are some towns that do parking spaces based on square footage of office space. Usually it's you know, one space per 250 square feet of office space. Correct. That's for businesses, yes. For businesses, not for yeah. residential. Right. I mean, that's, that's another question. Um, in our current existing regulations, and I carry that forward into the proposed, we focus on the, the maximum floor area for the business. Do we really care? And we've, what we've been doing in the past has been on a square footage. I mean, not a percentage, but a square footage, like 700, no more than 750 square feet. Should it be on the percentage of the- I the, think the, either. But let, let's, just, let's just talk about, you know, what we're really concerned about is the outside of the property. Not right. the end. But right. Bob, right. you said that. Yeah, that's, does everyone feel the same way? Yes. Yes. I regulate what goes on behind the door. Okay. You know, I, I certainly don't want, you know, a, a machine shop that's generating a lot of hazardous waste um, in, a, in a residential area, but there's probably other regulations that address that. That's not necessarily a zoning issue. That's a, you know, and I don't, I don't want to reach beyond the scope of what we have authority over. It just, I don't think we need to do that. I'm concerned with the amount of parking out that's going on outside, a little concerned about the number of trips, but we probably can't regulate that. Um, you know, to say to a, an attorney that can only have two people visit in a day, I, I just don't want to put those kind of limitations. No. Um, if they're coming and going and it's residential vehicles and there's never more than three or four cars there and they have enough parking to support it, what do we care? We don't. We don't. So, Is there a, is there a difference if um, there's uh, a separation from where the parking area is and the abutting property? or if it's a rear lot where everybody's driving basically right by the next person's house when they're coming in and going out? Does that make a difference? I think if they're automobiles or you know, any type of passenger vehicle, I don't think we probably want to get into that. But when okay. we have larger, heavier trucks that the business has control over, um, traveling in and out of the property and on the property, I think that's where we would want to weigh in. Okay. If people are coming to visit in whatever vehicle they happen to be in, um, you know, I don't think they're going to be coming in and out of, on, uh, on tractor trailer trucks just to visit the business. But yeah, let's I'm trying to keep this simple so that we our template now becomes easy to understand, manageable. And then if we need to, to tighten it up later, we will. I'm not trying to anticipate everything. I, I don't know how all of you feel. Mm. We can't. Can't. You know, and maybe, um, you know, a staff approval is a, maybe a maximum number of employee, employees and a maximum number of parking spaces and don't address the number of visitors because we can't monitor that. You know, the, Bob, the parking space thing, I think, is the best control that we have because it's easy to, to understand and verify. Well, there's a there's a lot that I think connects to that. Um, your Nutrient Allocation Act will limit the size of, of ground you can cover, right? Right off the bat, 
No. So if you're on a, huh? Everybody if you're on a small. It. May or may not. If you, I thought if you're on a small property, you can't pave the whole thing, can you? The, no. Uh, it's only structures that count against coverage. Uh, and, and, and like district is different, but. Impervious surfaces, as Bob was just saying. Service is different than it is for uh, tree lines and things like that, grass, things like that. You could use an imper impermeable surface like gravel for your driveway and, and parking spaces if that our, was an issue. Our regulations for lot coverage are just structures and pavement is not considered a structure. In the, in the Lake District, um, we, it's, a, it's different in that we're, we're, we're looking at, at that. But not in uh, in um, most of the town. The rest of the most of the town. Yeah, that I don't I don't think that's qu quite applicable to what we're talking about, Rich. Um, oh, I'm just I'm just saying, that typical house isn't going to have parking for five or six vehicles plus your own for customers. So obviously, don't they have to pull permits when they do paving and stuff that big? No. no. No, they don't, not in Columbia. So let's get back to what criteria we would use to, are we in agreement that maybe dividing this into three separate bins, staff approval, commission approval, and then special permit through the commission are, are a good way to segment these? And so how do we divide these up in a reasonable way? And what's the limit of what we wanna call a home business? What, what, at what point is, something going on at a property, not even applicable that we should allow it in a, in a residential neighborhood. What would be the criteria for something that is unpleasant in a residential neighborhood? If you look at it that way, that might be easier. I mean, there's a noise factor, there's a odor factor, um, things that would be objectionable to neighbors. So we have um, some- be a Somehow, can we define it that way? Well, already the special permit process gives us subjective um, ability to, re, uh, to review applications, and those could be the criteria there. So why don't we try and focus on staff approval and then go from staff approval up to commission approval, and then go from commission approval to what a special permit would be. And we might be redoing a lot of what we've already done but I'd like to at least come to an understanding, maybe a consensus if possible, conceptually about where we would want to place these. You know, having a, a limit on the number of visitors, looking at this spreadsheet that you did for us, Paula, I think it becomes clear now that I don't think we want to define floor area. I don't think we want to I define agree. Deliver, deliveries. We don't want to define inventory. We don't want to, um, we simply probably, number of employees and number of parking spaces. And then as long as it's all going on behind closed doors and it doesn't involve any type of uh, equipment that we might identify as clearly regulated in maybe um, a, a major use, if you, to use a minor, moderate, and major. Um, and and it uh, doesn't involve you know, industrial vehicles or, or big commercial vehicles. Let people just run their business and keep it simple with a nominal fee, just so we know who's running a business out of their home and who isn't. That's really, it's almost like a registration as opposed to a, a, a zoning permit, but it is a zoning permit. I think, I you, know, think you could probably get this to two categories. <clears throat> you know, uh, and, uh, the large version and then everybody else. Concern that I have is everybody else is then just staff approval, which may be fine, uh, but staff can't put any conditions on anything. They just can either approve exactly what was, what was submitted or deny what was submitted. Um, the, um, and I, I still, um, I, I'd like Bob's parking idea. I'd like that a lot but I still would want to have some sort of, like the parking is based on the estimated business trips, not family trips, but business trips, um, business activity in, in and out, whether it's employees or visitors, it doesn't matter, but just the, the trips. Um, 
So in and out of the driveway, you're talking. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, driveway. In and out well, of the driveway. And I had I don't... neighbors here. I had neighbors here who had kids, and they were in and out from <laughs> eight o'clock in the morning till midnight. So I'm, I'm, I said business, so it would be related to the business plus yeah, the ten kids. Gets, but yeah, that gets hard to define. So, you know, maybe limited to two employee spots and two customer spots, and then your own vehicles. Yeah. Okay. Rich, Rich, if we go with two categories then I think a large number of what people might want by just uh, commission approval would end up being thrown into a category needing a public hearing. And I don't, I don't want to, I want, I want public hearings to be rare. That we so even, don't I. <laughs> I don't well, want somebody to have to go through that. If you look at what we've had public hearings on over the last five years, approximately, uh, if, um, I don't want I don't want to force a lot of those uses that have not needed public hearings into public hearing category. And we've had some really bad abuses of home business, uh, uh, home occupations. And I'll be very specific. We've had um, years ago, Messier on Pine Street was operating a sawmill on his property in his residential neighborhood. He was bringing logs in from outside and sawing them on the site driving his poor neighbors crazy with all the noise. Well, I would consider a mill a large scale industry, not a small one. That's pretty obvious, you know, mills are not small and you got logging trucks going in and out because they got to bring them. Out, so he was just sawing the logs that he took down on his property and it wasn't considered a business even. But we've had a lot of abuses in residential neighborhoods. Um, and I, that's where, that's from my perspective, one of the prime things that we're here for is to pre protect people's right to quietly enjoy their property. And that's the whole purpose of the regulations is so that we don't have overuse next door to you. May I ask a question, how big was this property where the sawmill was on? Do you remember? I don't, I, I'm thinking it was approximately 20 acres. I think that's correct. It was a rear lot and he had big trucks going in all day long, coming out all day long past neighbors' driveways. And, th and that just set the tone for, there's certain things that we wanna have some, some regulations that, that don't allow it to go down that path. And to see big, for example, somebody in the landscaping business, and they come home and they park five big trucks in their yard next door to you. Are you happy with that? I'm in a rear lot, so. <laughs> okay, so you don't have a rear lot just try and, and walk in somebody else's shoes. So somebody parks a fleet of big vehicles right next door to your home that you worked hard to um, make your, your private sanctuary. And it's no longer that because you're, you're looking at monstrous amounts of heavy equipment, something you might would expect in a commercial zone, but certainly I don't, I wouldn't expect to see it in a residential zone. Well, you know, you can have some guidelines to that where they can't be visible, which I saw that in uh, in some of the uh, plans that you have written here. So let's go back to the minor. Um, maybe two employees and a maximum of four parking spaces. So this and is extra parking spaces in addition to what they would need for their house. In, in addition to what they would need for their okay. home. Okay. So. And I say that because if they can have up to two employees, then a maximum of four parking spaces, uh, meaning that they could have two more parking spaces for visitors or three for visitors if they have one employee. And we're not going to be able to enforce that rigidly, but at least it's something that we can aim at that's a reasonable number. And that would include parking for their, uh, their commercial vehicles. We had, had thought that this would be for some of the contractors that work out of their house, uh, but they come home at night with their uh, their truck full of electrical parts, uh, their box truck, their smaller box truck. So if we, let's say we say two employees or parking spaces out that, that are necessary for the business, a maximum of four. Right. Um, any bigger would be some other level of review. And what would we want a, a limit on a number of commercial vehicles in a residential neighborhood? And do they have to be screened? Or I separated a certain I, distance. 
I think also there should be no parking on the roads either, you know. So That's already the... prohibited by town statute. By town regulation. That that I, we don't have to address that because it's already there. If a neighbor has a problem because there's people constantly parking on the road, uh, all she has to do is call town. Uh, he or she has to call town hall and so I have to get this, the police to enforce it. You want to have a limitation on the size of the vehicle, in other words, if you have a, you know, a tractor trailer, maybe it's only one parking space, but you probably don't want to have a tractor trailer coming in and out of your. Uh, next, That's going next back building. to the chart that um, that Paula provided for us. You know, a, a certain limitation on vehicles. You know, a, a large pickup truck is okay, but uh, um, maybe a dump truck is not okay for a home business, or maybe we do allow a dump. I don't know what to do if it's if it's anything bigger than a pickup truck or a, a small delivery van, it has to be um, screened completely screened from the neighbor's view. I don't know. I'm I'm throwing this out without really having analyzed it. These are not definitive things I'm throwing out. I'm just throwing out ideas to examine. I see some errors with the chart and the way they do it. The only consistent thing you can do is the weight class because you have bucket truck in class five. And you could put a small bucket on a F-250, which would put you way up at the other end. Um, I drive a heavy-duty pickup truck, which is my regular one, and that's in class three. You know, yes, you have it is. You know, and technically, by the chart here, by the spreadsheet, that wouldn't be allowed on there. So well, you know, maybe there's, a lot, there's a lot of gray areas. There's regular vans that are walk-ins. So if you're talking anything, you're talking weight class. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do these pictures. What do I'm you not, I'm not suggesting the pictures. The pictures were for you guys. Okay. I was the class one is is six thousand pounds or less. Class two is six thousand to and one to ten thousand pounds. So it would be based on class one or class two, class three, not not the pictures. One, two, and three are all vehicles homeowners can own that weight class. Because you just get an F-350 dually and you can carry 14,000 pounds or, you know, a 3,500. You can carry that, but that's not the weight of the vehicle. Th that's the GVW and that's what they go by. That's what DOT goes by is the GVW. Weight of the vehicle versus the GVW is a completely different item. 10,000 to 14,000 pounds. So my, my 250 is at 10,000 pounds. So that's class two. And then you got 10,001 pounds. I just got rid of my 350, which was, I forget, 11,000 pounds with the springs and stuff I had in it. It's just, the only way you get regulated is by the GVW because that's what they'll, that's what they'll end up doing. They put a bucket on there. You know, you'll have your curb weight and then your gross weight based on what it can do. So you'd have to pick by the GVW whether they can park it in their driveway or not. And I seem to remember somebody living on 66 who used to park their uh, tractor trailer cab on their property all the time because that's what he did. All the time. You remember that, right, Paula? I mean, I... Vera. Vera. I remember that. I remember that. It was there all the time. It was almost to the junction of um, West Street and Hunt Road. Yep. On 66 was there a constant basis. And then it would be gone for a few weeks and it would be there for a month. <laughs> when it was when it was there and it was home, it was there for a long time. How can we translate what we're discussing now into some uh, something that we can suggest for a mi minor criteria? Um, I suggested two employees, four vehicles. Um, currently in there we have class one or two. Um, get rid of deliveries, floor area, inventory, uh, lot size, separation. Um, basically, if we limit it to class one and two, I don't think we need to address separation from the neighbor. Um, and these would be vehicles that are business vehicles, not personal. If you have a personal F-350 and it's, we're not going to be able to prove whether it's used by the business or the individual, but if you've got an F-350 that's a class three vehicle, then it's a nebulous thing. Uh, we, we can't 
get into slicing and dicing yeah. that. I the the footnote uh, for the vehicles, the little little three footnote is uh, with a commercial or a combo registration. Okay. That, that's not going to work because anything over ten thousand gross now they're you know suggesting it be a commercial vehicle and you have to get commercial registration and commercial insurance. And everything anything else. Over, is over combination 10, is all other pickup trucks too. Can we try and you can, have a passenger, you can have a passenger plate on a pickup. Yeah, then you can't carry anything. <laughs> well, I mean you're splitting you're splitting hair, so where do you want to draw the line? Well, I don't, let me let me suggest specifically that we let's let's decide for the moment that minor staff approval is two employees, four four parking spaces. Uh, that we would use verbiage that uh, the, the need a maximum of four parking spaces for uh, the home business related use and uh, uh, parking on site for only class one or two vehicles and no signage. Um, and then the description of offices for person whose services are performed elsewhere, i.e. contractors and or worker spaces for items made at at the home, but sold elsewhere or by mail. I think that that defines that, at least for the time being. We well. may want to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we may want to add the, the examples from uh, the moderate um, from, based on our conversations with now um, minor would allow visitors. Um, and moderate has uh, professional services such as accountant, attorney, financial advisor. Um, so that seems like that would also be a minor at this point. In our yeah, discussion. would want if somebody wants to operate, uh, you know, their a pro professional office space out of their home. Let's call that minor. So, if you offer services to the public and they do come in, so how, how does everyone feel about that? So far, so good. Um, I have a question though. They should have some kind of sign because if people yes. can't yep. find it, that's yep. they're going to be knocking and driving in other people's driveways. Yeah. You don't want to irritate them that way. Right. That but was a quick sign. Maybe maybe something slightly smaller, just yeah. enough to identify it. Bridge, if you could weigh in on that, I you, you're the one with the expertise well, there. Real estate size sign. You know the two by threes kind of is about the minimum. You know maybe on some of the real slow roads, but you know 87, 66. You know, okay. Uh, you know some of the mid road route six definitely three by three. You'll probably be struggling a little bit not too bad depending on placement um what if we use um something uh to the effect that it's for for um public identification of the location as opposed to advertising i, I don't want to see a, a billboard for the business out there as much as just a way for the public to know that they're at the right place you got to be careful because legally you can't yeah. dictate content you cannot you can dictate size Size and height. Okay, good point. So we don't we don't want to go that route, but you know you're not going to you're not going to be able to advertise much on a two by three. No. Or you won't be able to read it. So right. That won't do them any good. With allowing a two by three foot sign on uh, on a minor staff approval. I think that would be fine. I think it'd be good. That's Everyone it. good with that? Yeah. Yes. So, you okay. know, one thing I think you could do with. Uh, Parking. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, one thing I think you could do with parking spaces is what's going to be there overnight. Because the last thing you want, you, you're worried about what the outside looks like. If you're limited to just two commercial vehicles overnight in the parking spots, now you're not going to get, you know, these um, landscapers or your mills or whatever, all of a sudden have three or four, uh, you know, logging trucks there, trailers or you, you'll stop a, somebody from starting up a garage on the property too, you know? So- That's, that's prohibited, a garage. I, I'm just using that as an example, yeah. for yeah. lack of better words. But you know, maybe what's parked there overnight will really dictate the parking availability. That's a great idea. And How it does it feel about that? No, it's, I, that's what I had assumed this column was, because based on our previous discussions, I didn't, stipulate that here, but that's what I thought it was, was the overnight parking. So um, the, in the third column there, then it says um, number of vehicles to class one or two, meaning if there were 
four four passenger cars there. We, it's outside. Right, right. Unless they're registered at that property. You know? I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Unless, I have three vehicles and there's only two of us. If I had a couple of kids, there might be five vehicles there. So those are your personal cars. That's what I mean. If yeah, they had to be yeah. registered and to the property. Right. But these are overnight for for the well, you want, not for cars, yeah. just the you can have 20 cars there overnight if you need. <laughs> this is just for the class one and two. Okay, so, let me go and let me just read this back to everybody. So minor, which would be staff approval, no more than two employees no more than four parking spaces, and no more than two class one or two vehicles parked overnight. So how are we gonna determine, let's say somebody comes in and says, I'm an, an accountant, um, and I have somebody that comes, how many parking places are we gonna have that person have? Um, uh, well, the we, thing in the regulation is no more than four. If they come in and propose only one parking space for themselves and one for a client, then, then it's an, a non-issue. Okay, all right. Yeah, we're just saying the maximum number. Okay, if okay. They come, came in and said, look, I need 14 spaces because I have a lot of different people that are coming and going at any one okay. given. Okay, okay. We don't want that by minor staff approval. Okay, right, right. No number of spaces, not a minimum. We're not going to have criteria for the minimum number of spaces. It's a home-based business. Um, right now we're- Four we're spaces, looking, they use them as they want, right? Yeah, use them as they want, and no if more they, than two class one or two vehicles parked overnight. But if they if they tell the CEO that they're not going to have any employees or visitors, then they need no additional parking. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Why? I'm just I'm just making sure. So, um, if the business grows, there may be an issue. But okay. Then, well, then they may come back for a different approval. Back in. Yeah. Okay. Why doesn't then? Why doesn't the the instead of them having to ask for parking spots, if it's part of it, that's what they're allowed to when they file for the permit. You're allowed to at your business go up to four spots. Okay. You don't have to tell them I'm going to use two okay. or one. You know that's Good. part of the permit. Okay. Let that's them grow great. a little bit. That's so, a good idea. Which will need it. The the CEO will have to make sure that there's there's a that four up to four is is um, feasible on that lot. If it's not, they won't get customers. <laughs> yep. You, you, see, I'm, I'm not looking for that level of interaction with the public on the ZEO's part. I'm not looking for them to review a site plan for a home business and say, well, you know, what do you need? Do you have room for it? If they don't have room for it, they don't have room for it. I would think that would be, staff would need to look at the site to make sure it's, there is room for parking. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't either. Okay. They, they can, mean, what we're saying is you can park up to four. I, what, my, my perspective, I don't mean to speak for other people, but you can have up to two employees. You can have up to four parking spaces and you can have up to two class one or two vehicles parked overnight at the property. And that's the rule. And there's really, if we're having the staff do it, they don't have any discretion there. They can't say, I don't like your parking scheme. I mean, if there's not room for the for four parking spaces, then there's there room for four parking spaces. And that, How are and we that, discriminating between, between personal vehicles? You know, like the example of like, say if you got two, two teenage kids that have cars and plus you and your wife, so you, you might have four, four personal vehicles. Right. You so how, do you, how do you discriminate between this and what, we, what we're allowing as far as business? We just, we just don't get into it. You know, you know how, how much regulation you want for, for a low impact um, home business? I mean, we could we could what if this until tomorrow morning? I mean, thank you. <laughs> Rather not. You know, I'm Larry. Larry, I'm not trying to talk down what you're saying, but all I'm saying is we can't figure all this out for people. If they don't, if if they've got five personal vehicles and. They want four more for the business, and that's nine vehicles. And they have a, a you know a sixty foot long driveway that's two cars wide. They don't have room for all this stuff. We're not telling them. Realistically speaking, realistically speaking, the only reason we're going 
through all of this is because if a neighbor complains, we have to have some teeth, the, the ZEL has to have some teeth in some kind of regulations to go back after somebody. That's really the basis for all of this, isn't it? Good point, yeah. So I, you know, I think making it as easy as possible for the applicant, if the applicant abuses the situation, then something has to be, be in writing so that the ZEO can go back and enforce something. That's, that's, that's it. So the application process should be as easy as possible, I think. So maybe on the application, it's up to the applicant to have a, a, a simple line drawing with where the indicated parking is. That's what we have people do for, for other type applications. That's a good idea. Why not? And that's, yeah. what, that's what I'm talking about. And we have GIS. I mean, it takes two seconds to look on, on uh, the CROG website to see if there's, if it looks like there could be enough parking there. Okay. So then you have that on record as the part of their application. And if right. they abuse it, then you can go back and tell right. them they can do right. it. You got some teeth. Yeah. So under... Um, um, one of the things allocated uh, parking area for the business uh, yep. to be de defined as part of the application. Right. Well, we'll have them um, submit a, a sketch. I mean, we currently are asking and our existing regulations, um, if you're your home occupation, you need to like do a schematic of where things are inside your house. Um, I mean, that's, I that's what, that. That's what's required in our current existing regulations. I know. I, that's why we need to change these. Yep. Okay. You know, as so, I was saying before, when I, right mine now, didn't have, I didn't have to do any of that when I started. Yeah, but that was 100 years ago. No, <laughs> not quite. Or, or you probably were supposed to and didn't. didn't I know. went to the town hall and they told oh, me, okay. what do I got to do? Okay, good. But from a planning and zoning standpoint, our purview stops at the front door. Right. right. Well, we can, from what we can see, from what we can see from public property, from somebody else's property, we can't go onto the property. Let me ask, let's do this. Let's get through moderate and it <laughs> might be a bit obvious where major will be. Uh, let's work through this. Let's just keep this moving. I think we have a good idea where we want minor to be, okay? Yes. We'll look at it again. We're not gonna close this public hearing tonight because we're gonna have this revised approach to this uh, in in print in front of us to look at the next time we we meet and I promise I won't cancel meetings for two months in a row I love it by the way did anyone object to <laughs> I, I heard lots of people were were clamoring for meetings <laughs> where were you <laughs> Rich, just for the sake of discussion let's leave it leave this um, where we, we have three categories for now I don't want to just gloss over your desire for it to be two, but let's leave it for three for discussion. And if we can combine two categories, I'm, I'm, my mind is open. I, I think everyone else is, is open. Just by having this discussion tonight, I think we've made this regulation more what our ideal is. Hopefully simpler, and because it's simpler, probably easier to understand and enforce. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so moderate would be, um, let's assume moderate would be just a site plan review by the commission. Uh, right now, uh, Paula had put in into the chart uh, two employees, um, and we had the number of... Well, it, was, it, was, it, out. it was visitors, so I, we need to focus on, uh, for moderate, how many, how many parking places they would need, or up well, to. I, I would say that if we're going to, maybe the, the difference between um, minor and moderate would simply be allowing class three vehicles and um, requiring some buffer um, if, if, if appropriate um, for the neighbors so that they don't have to look at the larger commercial vehicles. And that's all I can see is a difference because we're getting rid of deliveries, floor area, inventory. Yep. yep. I have a concern with any kind of large commercial vehicles in a residential zone. Large commercial vehicles belong in commercial zones, not in residential zones. Uh, well, the question is whether a class three, we consider a large commercial vehicle. I, I consider a box truck a large vehicle. I don't want it parked next to my house. I think it degrades the, re the resale value of my house. So maybe, maybe the parking area, um, for the moderates, 
needs to have a little bit of separation for property lines. I think it needs to be eliminated. I don't think I don't think any class three or above vehicle should be in a residential zone. So you don't think a head, uh, F three fifty should be in a residential zone? The, the exception could be a the exception could be a heavy duty pickup truck, which is what Paula had on her sheet, or a van. Well, I would have a walk in. You can go get a uh, a Ford van that's like in two fifty and walk into it. I understand the box. So that's truck. the that's the cla class. Is writing on the class. side. Of it? Is it going to advertise the plumber? Probably. Um, Probably. I, I think that I think that degrades the residential value of a piece of property. The you know the, the property the residential piece of property. Well, I think a lot of those guys are going to be driving that home, and then they're going to be leaving from their house in the morning. Where are they where are they going to park? Do you want them to, do you want to park down the park and ride and leave a car down there, and then change over to the car and drive home? No, I don't know. It's just something to think about. Yeah. Or what happens if I have to drive the flatbed home to the house? Or I gotta hide I, it somewhere? I find my piece of property be, to, to be next to a lot with a bunch of box trucks in it. Well, well not a bunch, but I mean, um, if you have one or if it's on an occasional type of thing, I mean, is it gonna be the-, the occasional, becomes know, per, occasional becomes permanent, that's the problem. Yeah, but those walk-in vans that like carpenters have or electricians. They're all over the place. They're everywhere. Right. I mean, I don't see any problem with them personally. That's what a person does for a living. They're a walk-in so, van. They're, you know. And there's a lot of people who go on call in some of those and take them home when they're on call. You know, from some big of them companies. just don't. I mean, the guy who does all my handiwork has one. I don't find it offensive. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't think I'd find it offensive if he parked, if he lived next to me. Well, one thing you can do is is work on quantity of vehicles being parked there to eliminate clutter, you know, abundance. Now, the next question will be, what size do you want them to be able to park there overnight? That's where the discrepancy the so that's is the, coming. That's from. the column called vehicles. That's for overnight parking. Let me let me suggest this. Tell me what you think of this. So moderate would be um, two employees, four four vehicles parking maximum. Um, two class one or two, um, uh, and no more than one class three pickup or walk-in van. And that so would be it, approval. And so then is it that would, a total of three, three vehicles? Uh, n or, no, that, or two, two that's one of, okay. Two, right. one, two, uh, two vehicles uh, uh, that are uh, class one, two, or, or um, one, one of those two could be a class three and they could only be a pickup truck or a walk-in van. A box truck or a city delivery truck. Again, okay. you know, but it doesn't address the concern that was brought up. I, don't, I forgot who brought it up, but what about, what about that um, tradesperson who does bring home a city delivery size truck that's their everyday truck for work and they park it at home at night? You know, certain sizes you can restrict to having to be parked out of sight. Bob, you keep cutting out. I can't hear what you're saying. All right. The I think the problem with staff approval on that is that the adjoining property owners do not get notified. They have no input at, as to what's happening. I think uh, that's an important part of the process if you're talking about commercial vehicles. Okay, we've moved on from staff approval to um, a moderate, which is a, a PZC site plan review. Right. I'm thinking we have somewhere in our regulations, not in home occupations, but somewhere that limits uh, the length uh, of the vehicle that you can park on your residential property. Because uh, I know we've had uh, some rigs that have been parking that uh, Connie has been uh, uh, getting them to park somewhere else, not next to their house. Um, and we have somebody that has a rig and a trail with an attached trailer that's been parking on, uh, I think it's West Street. And she's been working with them. She, I think she's succeeded on, on, them, on both of those at this point. It's in our reg somewhere and it's not in home occupation. I'll, I can't find it at this very moment, but uh, the size of what you can park overnight in a residential district, um, there's a limit to that. It's in a different location in the regs and um, I'll get that to you. So you can 
limit to what you want that's related to the business and the big stuff is already uh, not allowed anyway. So I'll find, I'll find the regs for our next meeting. Um, so what about um, the idea of, again, two commercial vehicles, one of which could be a class three, but only a pickup or a walk-in and uh, there would have to be separation and we might, we can talk about the number and maybe also um, uh, uh, physical screening, visible screening from the neighbor's view. And if you can't accomplish that, then you can't do that on that, t that size lot, whether it's a, a rear lot or a non-rear lot. Let's, let's put this down on paper, if you don't mind. Just, yeah, I think it'll be easier to pick it apart once it's on paper later on, because I think we accomplished a lot, especially with minor approval to, to tonight. Everyone okay with that? For starters, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hey, Paul. What I what I'll do is uh, I think I'll convert this into some of the language that'll be in the the actual draft as well, um, because it's I mean it, a table format makes it look like it's A or B period, whereas in in the regulations that you can can cover certain things that have to be screened and and um, let, let me kind of let me propose that we don't even get into public hearing consideration this evening. I I agree. That's you know, yep. let's, let's, let's get the first two categories um, refined and then let's analyze where we want to go from there. It's left. Whether it's a merging or it's a refinement of the other one. But I think we've made minor a lot more simple to administer and understand if we go yes. in the direction we've indicated. Uh, moderate, again, as we look at it on a chart basis, I just get concerned about the vehicles. Not, not the trips, not the um, number of employees, not what goes on inside the building. So I, I get concerned with the vehicles. And I, Bob, I share your concerns, uh, but my concerns are for those big trucks with a lot of advertising on them. You know, a, a white um, walk-in step van, that's, that's a non-issue. That could be a camper, for heaven's sakes. So one thing that you've not, not even considered here is a lot of contractors pull a trailer, a box trailer, which can get covered too. And that's not even talked about on here. That's a good point, Rich. That's, that's also part of the regulation that's somewhere else that I can't find where it is right at this very moment. Well, then maybe we should just have a line item refer to whatever page right. that comes out yeah. of. Yep, we will. Now, what about, what about Larry? What about landscapers pulling a trailer? You can have a pickup truck and a landscape trailer. It's about the same as a box. Yep. Hey, there could be a box trailer with somebody who runs motocross every weekend and they, they store their bikes in it and tow the bikes in it. Yes. What's the difference between that and, and a, a commercial trailer that's identical? Um, so, okay, that's a good, I'm glad you brought that up. I know you're gonna think of more, Rich. Thank you. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, it's a slippery slope when you try to, you know, put everything into a pigeonhole and get it confined. You know, you, it just opens up a whole can of worms sometimes. And if you don't address it, it's, it's not prohibited. Right, right. Maybe, um, maybe so we, could, we could eliminate one, one, other park, one other parking spot if you have one of those. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, parking spots is the key to keeping a lot of this confined. Yep. That and uh, rolling billboards. That's what I consider box trucks and trailers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things to think about, we'll not discuss tonight. I think, thank you, Rick, for not going down that road with a major. But a couple things to think about is we have um, some small manufacturing um, businesses possibilities um, and um, our dog related businesses, grooming, not kenneling, but grooming. So some of those things, uh, the, the public hearing um, should be something that really could have neighbor impact and that the neighbor should, should weigh in on. Um, or we just do not allow um, uh, more um, invasive or, or a more active, more loud, more 
impactful on neighbors type businesses in, in, in the neighborhoods? You know, I have an opinion on if you're going to impact your neighbors, such as high traffic volumes, like more than 10 vehicles a day, or, you know, it's going to be noisy or you're moving more outdoors. I think it's up to the person pulling the permit that they should have to notify every connecting neighbor of what they're doing and have their opinion heard. I had to do that when I opened up a, my sign shop in Hebron. I had to send a letter to every house that was, you know, including across the street that technically could connect the corners and they all had an opportunity to voice their opinion on it. And so not one of them. That, that would be a major. Yeah, well, at some point, that's that's how, you, like I said, when they we work to outside and impacting them, I'm off of what Paula was saying. You know, I, I was when we had the um, the dog grooming business uh, that we that we uh, just approved. I was especially sensitive because uh, many years ago, somebody two house lots away had a dog grooming business. And then there was a fence outside, and there were dogs barking all day long three, four, five, six dogs out there nonstop. It just, there was no quiet in the neighborhood. Yeah. So I was especially sensitive to that. That's a nightmare. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, why don't we call it a night, everybody? Paula, anything <laughs> else? To... I'm done. <laughs> like, I'm done. Like, all these non-meetings, we're getting out of practice. I know. I know. The, only, right. the only other thing you wanted to talk about was, um, future zoning regulations, but we can certainly hold off on that till um, yeah, the next meeting. So uh, let's just get issue. through this. You know, so what, we, we need to, uh, uh, you've opened the, you continued the public hearing. So are you, are you uh, closing or continuing it again until our next meeting? Is our next meeting on the 27th? Uh, probably. What's the, is that a? Or 28th, I'm sorry. 28th. 28th. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we continue this public the hearing. 20, 28th? Oh, the 28th, yes. I'm sorry, yes. To Monday, September 28th at 7 p.m. Uh, in whatever way we hold meetings. Okay. Um, I, you will hear the sound of ocean waves on, in the background of mine. Okay. You'll have to put up with that. Sorry. Oh, God. Going, no. going, to, Maine again? <laughs> going to Maine. I haven't been to Maine in over a year. Is that a motion? Yes. You know, I'll let me just say. Motion. Rick made a motion. Did we have a second on that? I'll second. Second. I to Vera I'll second it first. Yep. Okay. All, everyone in favor of that? Uh, Aye. 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 Just again, I'd like to formally recognize EJ at the next meeting, even if we just tell him we recognize them. And if and if you could get the board of selectmen to just a thank you certificate from the town, uh, something framed. I will uh, work on that. Yes. And it's uh this was really productive because you know what I love more simple regulations and coming up with things that are very easy to understand what the rules are and they're enforceable because they're reasonable. I think we're going in the right direction. Thank you, everybody. And I think a key um, to any any approval, whether it's staff or, or the commission, is how detailed the application is um, and the, the, the proposed uses. Uh, so that when a neighbor does complain, whether it's staff approval or, or, or PZC approval, when a neighbor does complain, we can go back to the application and say, you, know, you said there would only be, you know, right. you would not be working at night, and now you are. You know, so that it's so it, we have to be careful with how we how we prepare the application as well. So, and it's um, anything else? Any? Uh, I'm just going through the agenda. We have so no new business. We're not going to discuss future zoning regulations. Anything under communications and reports? I didn't see anything. No nope. part of citizens, Lisa. Hey, when you get to number ten, let me know. We're at ten. Uh, we're at ten. Okay, we're at ten. Okay, I have an issue. Um, there's a uh, sightline issue problem with a feather flag at Duncan Donuts. Okay, I'll I'll let pulling, the, pulling, I'll pulling let, out, pulling out, going to pulling out, okay. going left. Okay, 
I will let the I will let the CEO know that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, audience of citizens, anything? Nothing. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second that one. I was here for the whole Any meeting. Favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay. So it's unanimous. So it was unanimous. Unanimous. Yep. <laughs> unanimous. Hey, it's nice to see everybody's face.